Even if we didn't know who my next guest's late father was, there was never a question he didn't need to be heard. I saw him back in 2015 at SOBs during a show with R.A. The Rugged Man. He killed it and has been killing it lyrically for years, creating his own lane and being his own voice. He officially started back in 2002. Uh, he just dropped a new album, Grace in the Universe. He's Chris Rivers, and I want to welcome him to the library. Thanks for being here, man. Yeah, thank you for having me, brother. Oh, man, it's weird because, like, I grew up in a, my father was uh, a professional rapper. So back then I didn't, like, comprehend or understand, like, what was going on. Like, I didn't know he was famous. Like, I'm, like, four years old. Like, I right. didn't realize the nuances. Uh, but I've always been around music and, um, you know, chilling in the studios here and there. But I would say, like, you know, after he died, I wanted to, I just felt kind of obligated to do music. So, But I, I realized I was more into, like, I used to love listening to MJ, like the the album, the, the um, which album was that? The the way she walk, the way she oh, talk. Yeah, 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 no, I no. cannot, you know, with the white with the white <laughs> yeah. cover. I used to be bumping that. Uh, I used to I used to bump a lot of like Eminem and different stuff. Sing for a moment. Eminem was a big song for me to oh, like, nice. you know, like and just realizing. I think back then I realized that uh, I wanted to be a superhero. That was my thing. But I I couldn't fly. I don't have like super strength or laser beams. But I was always really good with words, and I realized how much uh, music with those songs. And I used to listen to a lot of rock music too. But they really got me through uh, a lot of moments. So I'm like, yo, I can I can help people with words, and and I'm good at them. So it kind of was like an accumulation of like all those things that just showed me like, yo, like you should pursue this. And um, I did, and now I'm here talking about it, which is amazing. I mean, like eighteen, yeah, yeah eighteen, 18, 18, 18 years, years later, against to this interview, and not getting writer's block, which is yeah. Not, yeah, yeah oh, a few, a few thousand times. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a few thousand times. Uh, we turned to you, you know, your new album, um, GITU. GITU, uh, yep. Um, the press release for the album says this. Even though Chris started rapping at a very young age, as you just said, mm -hmm. uh, being the son of one of hip-hop's most beloved artists has undeniably been a gift and a curse mm -hmm. for you. Uh, so let's break it down. Like, What is the gift and what is the curse of being obviously the, late, the gift? The son? gift is simple. The, gi the gift is um, more simple than the curse. The curse is complex, and I'll, I'll do my best to explain the curse. But the gift part is, uh, oh, that's Big Pun's son. Let's give him a chance to rap. Let's hear him out. You know, it, it kind of stops there. Right. Um, you know, uh, people are more willing to listen uh, just to see if I'm good enough. You know, it's yeah. interesting. It's like, oh, Michael Jordan's son plays ball. Let me let me just see if he can play. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that that's dope. The opportunity uh, that people get to listen. I would say, um, in that same breath, uh, part of that curse will be, um, you know, the expectation. It's like I started writing super young, or like if I'm even 15 when I, I was 17 when I thought I started getting pretty decent. Like, you know, um, it, it was like, all right, like yeah, that I, I could spit a dope verse. It could be dope, and it's like, well, that was dope, but it wasn't as good as your father's best thing ever. So it's crazy. It was trash, you know. So just living, and that's also part of the gift. Too, though because it allowed me to get like really like okay i gotta get dumb nice so people could respect me even a little bit right. because you know so it forced me to really work on my my craft and then um i would say also just getting out of shadow like the expectation like it's internalized towards myself like me feeling like i need to i want to establish myself i don't want to be known as just somebody's son i don't want to you know I, i'm doing this because i love it and uh, getting out that shadow, but it, it's harder when people expect you to be a certain way. And then even if you're really good, since they're expecting you to be something just to be the next pun or the next, they won't like you if you're not fulfilling that expectation, even if it's really good. And even if they didn't attach you to that, they would enjoy it. Now they're not. So there's that. And I also feel like um, certain things... Uh, uh, it held me back in certain ways of like figuring stuff out the organic or natural way mm -hmm. because I had certain, uh, you know, because people were willing to listen or I had people around me that already kind of knew the game, like like it, wh whether it be like managers or people that could like connect. Like I was I was given some tools, you know, what I'm saying I wasn't allowed to choose. Not that I wasn't allowed to choose the tools. It's that I had these tools early. So most people, when they start off, oh, I want to rap. You figure out the beginning of yourself. You really find right. someone who's fucking what, messing with you. Can I curse? Yeah, of course. You find someone who's fucking with you. They, you know, they link with you. You do you do the stuff. You figure out how to get beats. You figure out the stuff. You know that I, you know, my, my cousin and he's amazing. Like he manages me, and um, he's been in this for a while. And we knew some producers already and certain things. So I kind of fell into a groove that was already there, you know, which is great. Uh, but at the same time, it was damaging uh, when I was discovering myself as an artist still. So I fell into these lanes that were already paved that weren't ones I wanted to walk on, but because they were already paved and it made it almost made sense. Like, of course, let's try to walk on these because it's like a, right. but it ultimately destroyed uh, a bit of my, um, like my soul, like figuring, like 
me figuring out what I wanted to do and then being pushed in certain directions, it kind of uh, took away like my love for it. I spent a long time doing making stuff I didn't like. So it took me a while to get out of that hole and like figure what, it out. Really, what do you mean making stuff? You so like um, I say this because. I can't write for the life of me. Right, so the right, fun, right. The fun thing is that like you just made stuff you don't like, but you're still probably incredible yeah, to yeah, you. Know? Yeah, you know, it's funny because like I accum- like I, this is the first, Gitu uh, is the first project. Uh, There's the one that just came out. It's the first one I actually like. Like oh, it's the wow. first one I actually like. The other ones, I didn't really like it because I was still, it wasn't what I heard in my head. And I was using, um, again, a lot of my time I was really, uh, trying to live like yo I gotta prove I can rap so I'm here going too hard just right. rapping or I gotta prove this or uh, or these people told me I gotta sound more like this or this and that like I was I was really insecure and uncomfortable with myself as a person and as an artist and then I was being pushed and swayed in a lot of ways because of expectations of what people thought was cool so I ultimately started writing and rapping just in the context of like trying to please others and right. then I That's fell out of love yeah. because it was something originally I did for myself and as a form of expression so then I'm doing this for years uh, you know, hip hop ain't something that you just. Pop, some people just pop, but I I put all, almost all my money back into it. Um, it's not something that I made too much. Like I survive off of it, and it's good, but it's not something I'm bought. So you have a thousand pounds of stress. You're not. I'm not rich yet. I'm none of this stuff, and I'm not having fun, and I'm not liking what I'm putting out. So it became very like, yo, why am I doing this? You know. So can't and, work. Yeah, yeah. Dude. So I had I had to get to a place where I was like, yo. I need to I need to make things closer to what I hear in my head, and I need to make things that like that I truly feel and music that I actually like. Cause right. I didn't like, and that's what this project was. I really made stuff that I personally liked, and um, I uh, kind of locked myself in like a box and took no outside opinions. It was like, yo, I just need to, I just need to, you know, do this myself, and uh, and it, and it created this, and I'm super proud of it, and um, it kind of broke through that barrier inside of like self doubt, like whether or not being myself, like I just got through it you know and, and now now I'm, now I'm having fun right the best and, and, and you saw that i mean you saw that last night i i was i saw you on instagram and the you, live you, joint you, yeah, yeah yeah but also even like you writing like you know just what you wrote about it's dropping at 12 it's dropping yeah. at midnight super excited you know that's yeah yeah so you could tell there was like stupid excitement yeah no no this, this, like this, this is this is like a long like i've been saying gitu on the way for so long and, I, and now it's here and it's like yo like this is incredible like this is the first time i've been excited for it to be received by the public you know what right. i'm saying like usually i'm like <sighs> like scared to promote it because i don't like it like this like i like, like even i'm to the point now where someone told me like yo i don't like that song i'm like i don't care i love this <laughs> song like i'm that much into it and this is the first time i felt this way so like it's it's really it's really enlightened like this uh, you know 500 years into my career i finally enjoy <laughs> something so like it's, it's, it's nice man it's nice yeah let's talk about that i mean let's talk about getting received by the public mm-hmm. i th- i think if you look at this album, you read up on all your other albums, mm-hmm. and this album is maybe the most personal yeah. you've gone through. You've gone through this emotional roller coaster, mm-hmm. so to say, um, and you express it on every track. Yeah, every track, yeah. Uh, so being, so I feel like if you're, you know, someone re- like getting received by the public, this like per, you know, showing sharing this public stuff. Yeah, and and you're so open to getting, you know, whatever happens. Yeah. You're, you're, you're excited, but at the same time, it's like. This is really your life. Yeah, it's like, my you know, life. And yeah. people are going to love judge it. it or judge it. Yeah, yeah. they're going to judge How it. How do you do that? Yo, I have a perpetual, like, I really don't care what people think. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really, truly don't care what people think uh, about me. Like, I, I, I do my best to be, to live up to my own expectations. And I'm my hardest critic. You know what I'm saying? So, me knowing I'm my hardest critic, if I love it, then I'm like, that's, that, that's what I'm trying to do for myself. Mm. And I think that... uh. You can't get too caught up on what people say. Like once it's out there, it's for the world. It's not yours anymore. Like it's mine. I made it, but it's out there now. So however people perceive it, and the populate, not everyone in the world is gonna love me. I wasn't always like this in the beginning when I first started rapping, and my videos was on World Star, and they was just cutting ass on my gap, and that I'm fat, and I'm this person, this. And World Star's just a terrible place because right. every like even if they love you, they're trying to destroy you. And I used to read the comments, and I, I would get That's hurt, like I would feel do, yeah, physically comments, yeah. ill, like I'm like ah, oh, like I hate these people. Where are they? And then it got to the point where I was like, I oh, fine, I'm not reading the comments. And then after a while. It started getting funny. Like, I could read the comments. Like, I could see mad, hateful comments, and it doesn't bother me. It's mm. like, because I get enough love. Like, there's people who love you, there's people who don't. There's people who love you and refuse to show it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I just focus on the good ones. And, um, yeah, I'm not nerd. Like, and plus, I truly do believe that it's good music. Like, I'm yeah. not insecure about it. I feel like if I felt like it was trash, I'd be more like, damn, this is my life and it's trash. People oh, like, yeah. I feel like this is going to help people. I feel like this is going to uh, inspire people. I feel like people are really going to jam. And I think, yeah, it's going to get that. It's going to get what I want from 
from that superhero aspect. Like, I want to save people. I want people to know. I'm going to get that. And if, pe- if some people don't f- mess with it, then, you know, that's on them. It's cool. Next one. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about some of the, the music, uh, the tracks on it. Yeah. Um, you have an incredible artist on it, uh, Oswin Benjamin. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah he's okay. Decent, decent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, listen, I'm no, a little ridiculous. behind with writing, but, you know, and he's, yeah, yeah. He's, he's outrageous. He's outrageous. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but he's on three times. Yeah, three times. Which is like, so you think about it, the age of, of, if we think about albums and the amount of features that people yeah. have, it's usually like feature a different feature each song. Yeah, it's yeah. like all it's like they're the featured they're artists. They're the featured. Yeah. Osmond's three times, but doesn't feel like you're doesn't feel like you're overdoing with him. Yeah. Um, what is it about? Like, what what is kind of your your absolute favorite thing about Osmond as an artist? But also, like, what is it about him that kind of pushes you as an artist to like oh man like my my i have a few favorite like he's one of my favorite people hands down like um i'm a fan and a close friend and it's one of those things that's like um he's so out of everyone like even more than me like this is what he was meant to do like he's really an artist like he's really truly he really truly has love for this this is his outlet this is his dream this is his passion like he's gonna go all the way with this and and i and i feel it and i and i love his um his ability to just connect with people and to fully feel that moment. Like he's very present and inside of it. And um, he's constantly striving for greatness. I think as an artist, what helps me, what helps uh, me be pushed by his presence is um, like he, he always, he sees the, like he, he sees me as a friend and as a fan as well. So when he hears me or hears something, it's like, he sees me from the perspective of the entire world. Mm. You know what I mean? And he t- he gives puts me onto that perspective and he'll let me know like, yo, you get two in your head or you do this. Like, write more like, yo, you, you've done A through Z. You've done this. Like, why don't you talk about this more? Like, we want to feel this. Like, I'll be telling him stories. He's like, yo, that's a whole verse. That's a whole rhyme. Like, so he pushes me and, and his him being so ridiculously good at what he does, he doesn't, like, when I first met him, I was just on some super lyrical, metaphysical, spiritual, mm-hmm. individual, like, just rapping, 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 rapping aggressively. And he's like, yo, like, jump on this record with me. Me, we're not even gonna put it out. It's like just jump on this record and see. Like I want to hear you on something like this. Like oh, nice. he genuinely just cares. He wants to see me improve. And the record, it was him. Like he was talking about real life stuff, and he was he's super good at rapping too. Like compounded all the stuff on Tondras, but it's real life stuff that makes you feel something. I couldn't just go in there and just rapidly rap. I would I would sound terrible next to someone who's rapping at a high level and saying real things. Right. So I had to learn how to do that, and it opened up this whole world of like, wow! I actually started feeling what I was saying. I'm like, this is amazing. Like, That's you know awesome. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and it brought love back in. So I I, I love that he, he he constantly seeing him through his journey and his career. Sometimes he'll get super excited about something, and I'll experience the same thing. Like in my career, I'm not excited at all, and and seeing him get excited reminds me like, yo, like. I got to remember that I love this. That's why I'm doing it. I get so caught up in the fact that I've been doing this for so long and it feels monotonous and, uh, you know, and the struggles of maintaining financial stability with chasing a dream and all that. All that gets caught in my head and he's just on some like, yo, love it. And that 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 piece, you know, you can't forget that. He's a constant reminder of it. So I'm, I'm lucky. Uh, I mean, you the track with him is uh, that... Uh with with Oswin is um, it's a great track. Na- uh, yeah, he's on NASA. You talking uh, about NASA? NASA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, the video is great. Uh, Shout this, out to Canon. Yeah, song, incredible video. The, 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 both, both, yeah. both of you guys are great on it. Uh, but let's talk about you. What was going on in your life at this time that kind of, kind of, I feel in a way like made you want to, you know, sort of escape from the earth. Yeah, yeah, you know, get yeah. the hell out of here. That it was just like, yo, um, a, a lot of this was, um, uh, you heard the whole project. Yeah. So like, perfect kind of, kind of, kind of sums like the emotional, like the heart. Like I was going through a, a very. Uh, trying time like from the last project to this one like from DeLorean it's been like two and a half years and um, uh, again like mentally I was trying to figure out if I still even wanted to do this because I'm like damn I'm doing it I'm, I haven't had fun in five years and it's not like I'm like yo I still love it I still I still love music but if I'm pursuing this I'm not having any fun and I'm not seeing any money I might as well uh, allocate my focus or something that's going to make me more financially stable and just do music as a hobby you right. know what i'm saying like saying, yeah. and that's why my head was at and i was just confused and i was also going through i was in a long relationship and um and we 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 broke up but before we broke up we decided to go into an open relationship and that kind of and then i found somebody else who i actually uh loved as well and then they both broke up with me on the same week oh. and that and and but before that whole experience like i learned so much about uh, myself, I learned so much about uh, love and insecurities and confidence and what it really means to be a person and be with other, like so many things. And then that my single phase after that was just so like just figuring out myself, gaining the confidence. I was twenty like. 
23, 24 at the time, and just figuring it out and like being out there and like having dynamics and relationships and getting hurt and being hurt and jaded, like all different things. And and I was just really in this like wormhole of like self discovery because that was the first time in my life that I was like allowed myself to really be alone like with myself and to discover who I was and things like that. Cause a lot of people don't like jump from, you know, they, they look for other people for their soulless. And I was like, yo, Chris, you never really sat down and got to know yourself. Like, so that, that whole thing. And, and this project kind of, um, uh, surmises that because during that process where I was dealing with my depression, I had depression my whole life when I was dealing with certain things, I would tell myself like Gitu is an acronym for greatest in the universe. Right. And I would tell that was one of my affirmations. I would tell myself like, yo, Chris, if you fully applied yourself, if you gave yourself a genuine chance, if you really allowed yourself to get there, you could be the greatest in the universe. You could be one of the greatest people who ever existed. And, um, that mantra kind of kept me going. It got me out the hole and allowed me to like, yo, you got You got to, get two feet in the door musically you got to believe in yourself you have to make something that you love prove to yourself you could do it you could prove to yourself that you could be everything you want in and outside of music and that all like just that whole conquering yourself and getting to that next step and taking everything emotionally that i've been through in various ways and just putting it in here with the story like it it was needed and and i just sorry for the long answer but yeah it was was just yeah I want to ask you actually because because in uh, affirmations part one, you, right? Uh, you 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 explain what G two is, yeah. right? And then and then what does, after affirmation parts one, it goes into the track uh, in the morning, yeah. And where you saying, "Wake me up in the morning, shake me up," and then you address someone. So I was curious, who are you addressing here? Are you so addressing I, that I'm mantra? Addre- yeah. So so um I, after that whole thing, like I'm currently in a relationship, and this is the love of my life, right? And um and it's it's beautiful I, that 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 song i wrote after um i met like into our relationship and i wanted to um take that one because i you know i've been through a lot of different things so you know when you wake up i don't know if you experienced there any listeners experienced this a lot of people haven't but like when you wake up in the morning across the person that you love whether it was someone you love before or who you love right now and you just wake up and you see the light hitting their face the sunshine and you have this you just feel overwhelmed with this joy and this love. Yeah. Like, yo, I love this person and they're here. And I wanted to take that moment, that one moment, and just, just like expand that into infinity because it's like that moment won't last forever. No matter, even if y'all live a long, happy life together, one of you, both of you are going to die. I'm not saying it morbidly, but I'm saying that right, like yeah. these moments are important. And if you could take these beautiful moments and just encapsulate them in a moment of time and just make it last forever, that's what I was trying to do uh, with this with this song. So I wrote that love song. Like this is the first love song I wrote and it's like towards her. And it was just describing that one moment that I felt in the morning. Some real artist shit. Like I woke yeah. up, saw her and I was like, I just need to write a whole song about this moment. Like, Don't talk yeah. to me. I got to write. <laughs> Plus, uh, strategically, um, it's important to build a steady female demographic. I feel like I suffered with that before because I was just aggressively screaming uh, at niggas with a high velocity of bars like you know girls don't want to hear that and uh, girls are 80% of sales in any market so if you're not capitalizing off of female sales then you're dumb right. you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying so like I was like alright so I need more songs for the ladies and plus like I'm not just aggressive and yelling all the time like I, you know I'm smooth and shit so <laughs> you know so I, yeah I wanted to do that one so that was that was my inspiration for that and the video's fire we just shot it so it'll be out soon yeah okay and switch, switch, switch gears a little bit so the, as you mentioned the album covers emotions drug di- drug, drug addiction mm-hmm. depression etc and an extremely powerful track to me was uh, the tra- is the track uh, Damaged Goods Damaged Goods man that's my jam I think addresses drug use uh, a little bit maybe where where uh, God, I don't remember. I don't know by heart Listen, yet. Uh, I know uh, by heart. Um, um, no, I mean, well, I say that in a way where, and I, I, I could be wrong. I'm saying, uh, like, no, I, I like hearing word, people's your, interpretations. Your wordplay with like the metaphor of being like, just talk whoever you're talking to, right, at this time, and then saying, well, I'm damaged goods, yeah, or doing whatever to my body, yeah. Can't goods. you see what can't you're you doing? See? What you do to me? Yeah. And the idea of being, well, it's like. It's uh, it's it's you're talking to drugs, like it, it, yeah. in, in the sense of this, in the sense of, I'm gonna show my age here, but in the sense of um, uh, you know, don't don't go chasing waterfall, waterfall, yeah, 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 and we're 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 left out rapping about the the woman who's giving the guy AIDS, right? Uh, that whole idea, like that the, whole you know, thing, yeah, the whole thing, where like the her her love and right. is actually AIDS, which is killing him, exactly. Same yeah. thing with like you're having like a moment with. The drugs you might be using, and right. it's Damaging your body. So I mean, that's kind of how I. No, saw I, it. it's, it's 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 beautiful that just because that that I wrote I wrote damaged goods. A lot of these songs I wrote with um, th- entendres. So 
you can listen to a lot of these records um, straight through, and depending on the level of the entendre that you're on, you could perceive it as to- like different stories each time. You know what I'm saying? So that one is about like each verse is three different stories of how being damaged goods, and each verse is multiple entendre. So it's almost like six different stories being told like in, oh, wow. in that and one of the one of them um references towards drugs one of the references towards the streets and figuring that out one of them references towards like you being hurt um at, like me being hurt in the past in various ways of figuring that out being damaged through life's courses and one of the verses uh you know it talks about just um damn like how how i could be damaging people or different things like that so it's mad levels to it and um ultimately like it, it just like i want i want i wanted that just transparency and everything you know like right. where my head was at and the second verse on damage goods is probably one of my favorite verses on the whole project easily you know what i mean and um and i just wanted to be transparent so like yeah there's this, this, this drug addiction talk, and me personally i think a lot of things are drugs like I'm, i don't i've never done like hardcore drugs like i smoke weed and i'm drinking and stuff like that but um i've never done like crack or no like yeah, any yeah. any crazy drugs or nothing like that uh but i think you could become addicted to people i think you become addicted to food i think you become addicted to circumstances and love and the feel dopamine and you know like your, you know the endorphins and stuff like that and i think that we become addicted to feeling down or uh being uh that need for approval and and all these addictions are uh, are destroying us in its own ways you know what i'm saying so i wanted to paint various pictures so i'm glad you caught that one because you know it was i mean i kept on yeah, this morning I was walking to work from 40 seconds. I was just kind of 40 yeah. seconds. I just walked. I was like, listen, I was like, I gotta listen to this track again. Yeah, yeah. No, um, that's a deep one. Deep one. I think this is from the second verse. From the, I could be wrong, so I apologize. But in Damaged Goods, you spit two, two, two lyrics that I really like. Uh, childish, I never got to be what a child is. Mm-hmm. And then I've never been two faced, two faced at masking my pain. Yeah. Like two lyrics. Never been two faced at masking my, my pain. pain. Just shit. Yeah. And the, the wordplay is amazing. And there's two kind of lyrics. Can you just kind of briefly talk about these lyrics and kind of what they uh, mean? Definitely. What was the first one again? Uh, childish. Never, childish never, never got, got to be what a child is. Uh, yeah. Feeling. The, yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that whole verse is my jam. Um, and, um, kind of like the, the, the verse in the, uh, can I say, can I say a little bit of the yeah, verse? Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, um, it's like, uh, where did my mind go when the time go? And how could I align those niggas act like I'm calm till combos? I could hold the world in my palm like the white folk or Bible if I got the lessons applied those and supplied hope. When my eyes close, I envision vivid pictures it consists of. This existence where I'm living, not existing, where I'm not in mental prisons, but by never really giving in and coping with the witness and the mama getting hit again. That shit leave you powerless, beating down into cowardice, even though it may super you, you empowered it, proud of it. Pick the thorn on the rose where you fly with it, childish. I never got to be what a child is and and all that paints that picture leading up like um childish i never got to be what a child is and i I always felt like i had this obligation to be a man from the age of like my father instilled that in me when before he died and he died when i was six he was like yo you have to uh if i'm gone you're the only boy you need to protect everybody you need to make sure they're all good and um after he died i'm a six-year-old but i'm like yo i have to Right. provide for my family and I was paying bills at eight years old that's 2002 making music I was paying bills at eight years old Amazing. and um and uh I never I never saw myself as a child and I never got to be a child I didn't have a childhood we was homeless half the time broke half the time I'm here thinking about how I'm going to take care of my family and protect everyone think about the future I never went to parties I never went to all these things and you know I think it's ch- um and I sometimes I feel like I'm still childish because I I, I hold resentment towards that part like get, not having a childhood right. and also just um just not fully being a man yet and, my, and and to my own critical opinion of what a man needs to do and being perfect in every way so it's like childish but i never got to be with a child is so it's that like double entendre there but it's it's a lot into it trust like it, yeah like uh, when i do the rap i can't wait for rap genius to break down all the all the but bars yeah, course, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah there's hella depth and all and all <laughs> the joints yeah but that that line is one of my favorites what, what was the other one you said? Uh, the other line is, I never been two faced at masking my pain. Yeah, I never been two faced at masking my pain. Like, um, I'm just a shit. Uh, what the uh, how the third verse start? I forgot that one. Um, uh, yeah, two faced at masking my pain. I'm just a shit head. Uh, yeah, ain't two faced at masking my pain. Like that, that right there. Like, I'm I'm pretty transparent. Like I said, like so on one layer, it's like yo, like I'm not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hide how I feel, especially on this whole project where I've been two-faced in the past where I'm all this super happy preachy person which is true because these are the things I tell myself to get 
out of these low moments and I want other people to be happy. Uh, but I wouldn't talk about how much how much I was going through or the darker parts. And it's like, yo, this whole project, like I'm not masking my pain. Like it's not two faces. It's just this one person and the transparency of it. And there's other layers to it. But that was, that's the main one I wanted to focus on. And I just love it, man. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a great verse. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fire. Uh, on the track, uh, uh, Don't Change, uh, you spit. That's my girl's favorite. It's uh, one nice. of my favorites. Um, yeah. That's why, that's why I say it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Don't I'm, change. I'm trying to get in with the, yeah, with yeah, your, with the uh, ladies. With the ladies. ladies you know? uh, but a great line, I think, is it took a bit to realize, but I hope I never change, change. even yeah. though I hold my own self image inside a frame to rearrange, rearrange by my brain that conditions to see myself feeling pain. Yeah. There's a lot there. Yeah. And once again, why I can't write. For yeah, the yeah, life yeah, of me. yeah. And, uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, once again, please talk about this. Yeah, and it took a bit what? to realize, but I hope I never change. Even though I hold my own self image inside of a frame to be rearranged, my brain that's conditioned to see myself feeling pain. I know I love myself deep down, beyond all the heartbreaks and beat downs. It's a little bit of that light, and that that that's that's me at the place of pure. Like that in between when I was telling myself like, "Yo, you could do this in depression." Like it took a bit to realize, but I hope I never change. Like. I, I hated myself most of my life and it took a long time to realize, but I'm actually amazing as a person. And sometimes people more critical, you know, people always tell me, oh, Chris, you're great. I see myself not like how everybody else sees myself for a long time. I've never heard one bad thing. Like everyone thinks I'm great, all this stuff. And, 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 and I'm really critical of myself. So it took me a bit to realize, but I hope I never change. And it's even though I hold my own self image inside of a frame to be rearranged by my brain that's conditioned to see myself in the pain. There's so much toxicity in all of our lives that, you know, I grew up in a household where I was abused and I was with women that, that, that cheated on me or did things and all these things are conditioning you to think about yourself in a lower way i grew up a uh, heavy you know i grew up obese or fat and people used to make fun of me or pick on me i got into fights or that all the stuff and it's like you know it's just like you're, i'm conditioned to see my uh, that's conditioned to see myself in the pain like i'm more used to seeing myself in pain and poverty through suffering than i am seeing myself happy so you get yeah. you normalize that you know yeah. what i'm saying you get comfortable in a place that's actually hurtful to you because you're familiar with it you know what I'm saying? That's why people get trapped in these cycles where they don't better themselves because, yeah, you could go to the gym and get a six pack and actually be happy with yourself if you're consistent, but you're more comfortable staying at home and just being sad about the fact that you're not in shape. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so it took a bit to realize, but I hope it never changed, even though I hold my own self image inside of a frame to be rearranged by my brain that's conditioned to see myself feeling pain. The fact that I'm conditioned to see that I, I, I make your thoughts are powerful. If you, if you tell yourself every day that you ain't worth shit or that you're going to fail, you're going to fail. Whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, that's what's true. Your thoughts are what gives it power. So if you think you can't, then you can't. And if you think you can, then you can't. And I was conditioned to think that I can't most of my life. And I still kept pushing forward right. and conquering through. And I made it this far while kicking myself in the face. So I'm like, what? I only imagine how far I could go if I actually got behind myself and pushed. Yeah, right. And that's that's kind of what I was surmising. But yeah, that that's that's got to be one of my favorite verses on the project. That's, that's yeah, a, yeah, um, yeah. So this, this, this album is interesting to me because, I mean, as... Talking to you more and actually, no, it's 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 quote unquote, I guess, more experimental in the yeah, sense, yeah, yeah, you know, in the sense of like music selection, uh, how do, how you're telling stories, not straight spitting. So, I was trying to figure out, and I crossed it out, but now I'm going to read it exactly. Yeah, do it, do uh, it. I'm tr I was trying to figure out how to ask this next question without the listeners or yourself thinking that I think the rest of the album is not as good as this track. Oh no, no, it's, um, it's fine. It's your favorite track? Well, n no, no. It, I, well, it's a track that. It's the track that I'm like, oh, this is the Chris Rivers I know. From, okay. This is the one that like I that remember seeing with. at SOBs, right. uh, you know, doing this straight fire spitting over this track. Right. And it's G.O.D. G.O.D. Fe featuring OCD. My least favorite record. Right. Yeah. And, and uh -huh. damn, now, now, now out of the crew. No, no, go, uh, go, no, go, no. go, 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 go. And, and I know I, why it's your favorite. I know but it's more it's like, it's like, hey, this is the Chris I know. This is the Chris that embodies. That's takes, why I put it on there. Takes there. But it's also buried 14 tracks in. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess the question is, why bury it so much? Which I think I know they probably know the answer to, but what does this track mean to you now that I know it's your least favorite? Right, track right. Um, I buried, buried it once because I uh, buried it one because I, I that that's to be expected. I want I, I didn't want to give people that right in the beginning, and then it's like, yeah, like to think it's the same. Like I want you off rip to be like, oh, like to get your ex expectations shattered and to know that that's just a piece of, of what I do and not just mm. what I do. Cause I could do that all day. That's easy. That's I'm used to it. Like, yeah, all that super lyrical fun shit. And plus that's, that's awesome. It's called G O D 
because OCD, uh, shout out to Team Backpack World Underground, me, Oswin, Benjamin, and Denzel Porter, we have ciphers on there. I don't know if you've seen those. Yeah. Um, and we're called OCD for Oswin, Chris, and Denzel. So this one's called G-O-D because it's Oswin and Denzel, but Gitu. So it's Gitu, Oswin, and Denzel. So awesome. G-O-D. And, and, um, and, it's, and it's, fi- it's just us dumping for five minutes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just going hard. And um, yeah, it's my least favorite because um, it's what I'm most, it's most used to. I get tired of things. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it wasn't, it, I, didn't, I don't feel like that record showed any growth. I feel like that record was uh, something that just I wanted to put there for the OCD fans, for the people who just wanted something like, like that. Like the, the, the whole project needed one of those. And I wanted something for me, Oswin and Denzel's OCD for the OCD fans that's waiting for that project. So I just put it there. But yeah, I think that one shows the least amount of growth out of mm. all, the, all the other ones. And I had the least amount of fun writing that one because I wasn't pushing myself or experimenting or what I did for all these songs every every beat that I heard I said what would I normally do to this and I threw it out the window and I did something different because I think if you it's called greatest in the universe I think if you're going to be the greatest you need to challenge yourself right. on that record I did not challenge myself I just did what I could do in my sleep which is wrap my ass off you know what I'm saying and Oswin and Denzel did the same thing and I skip it every time but I'm glad everybody <laughs> liked it yeah yeah I think more of, it's also the, the, the beat selection the, 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 the kind of the singing you know like the kind of the very gospel yeah, that I kind of appreciate it. In terms yeah, of yeah, it's got rock vibes, R and B vibes, got all that stuff. So yeah. it's kind of like okay. So you know, as mentioned in the beginning, your 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 career technically started in two thousand two. Yeah, uh, being technical, technical, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, It's two thousand nineteen. It's twenty nineteen, baby. Grace in the universe has dropped. Yes. Uh, sincerely, me. The official big pun tribute. Uh huh. Is your tribute, obviously, yeah. to your late father. Um. W- why, I guess, why seventeen years later to officially make this tribute to your dad well i i've had um like i had like one song called let my pops down before um i've had uh um what was the other one fear my crown where i where i where i spoke about uh abuse in general um and like different things this one i I, like i don't plan these strategically like when it when it comes to talking to my father like he's been dead uh most of my life and i've gotten uh i'm not i'm not super religious so i don't i don't like I, I, you know, I send my thoughts out to the universe. I do stuff like that, but I don't sit down every day and be like, hey, dad, I really miss you. You know what I'm saying? I don't tell him all the time. So when I feel like, um, the only, when I do decide that I feel like I want to tell him something or say something, I try to do it in, in a musical form because I feel like that's when I'm closest to him because he did music as well. You know what I mean? And, and that's how I express myself. I'm not really talkative and telling people how I feel if it's not on records or if you don't ask, I'm not just going to divulge it. So in that sense, like I feel like I, I wanted to update him, like on where I was at in my life, where my mom was at, where my sisters, like just tell him this a story, you know what I'm saying? Like I write him a letter almost saying, like, yo, like this is where we've been, this is how we feel, this is what's been going on. And it'd be great if you was here. And I miss you because I'm getting I'm twenty five now. I'm getting to a point in my life where it's like, yo, like I've realized and see the effects of not growing up with a father and not having a father figure, right. you know, like, cause it's normalized, especially mo- uh, amongst minorities. But until you're older and you see uh, certain uh, people that did have fathers as well, what fathers are, if you're close to being a father and you see what that means, you get to see the lack of that in your life in more specific ways and where it led. And I, and I felt, and I'm like, yo, it'd be great if, uh, you know, the, no matter what you do, I still rather be here with you. Like, and to have gotten to really know him and things like that. So, I wanted to write him that letter, and it just felt pivotal, and uh, and and it need and it needed that. Like the the project needed one of those, you know what I'm saying? And um, and I wanted to just get it all out there, and I did, and and I'm happy. I'm happy the way it turned out, because again, experimented on it too, and I, just from here to there, I wasn't trying to be, I wasn't trying anything. I was just truly writing how I felt and the sounds that I wanted it to sound, and just put it out without overthinking it. Yeah. You watch the video, and you obviously listen to the music for that track, and and what really stands out to me are the bongos. Yeah. Um, what are the significance of the bongos to you? So yeah, so the as very Puerto Rican, we're Puerto Rican, uh, you know, and um, that part uh, we wanted to. The whole video is me reenacting certain uh, scenes from uh, his video. Yeah. Still not a player, stuff like that. Um, um, twins in front of the project building with the army suit, like all that stuff. But I wanted to show like, so the video has multiple layers of stuff going on. Me getting outside the shadow, me telling him stuff, uh, me living in his image and making my own one. And, um, I think that uh, the that that scene right there, uh, I wanted to really have kind of that Spanish vibe. It was coming out near the Puerto Rican parade. Uh, he was a big, um, he had a big impact on the Hispanic society and, and hip hop. He was the first Latin rapper to go platinum, all those things. And there's a lot of pride attached to that. And I wanted 
my people, you know, we're all my, everyone's my people, obviously we're all humans, but I'm Puerto Rican and, and, and I want my people to know, like, I care about the culture. I care about that part. I wanted them to have a little piece of that scene where our culture was in it. And I wanted that live band feel. So it's just, it's just dope to have it in there. You know, what was the biggest lesson? Uh, I mean, maybe you learned it after he passed away, but, uh, in terms of being an artist, what did, was the biggest lesson you think you learned from your dad? Uh, from dad, um, I would say, uh, the biggest lesson, trust yourself. Um, he used to tell people, um, like, don't second guess yourself. He used to tell people all the time, like, let me show you. Um, uh, let me show you. Uh, that, that that was a thing that he would say often. I think he even created, like, a record thing over it. But let me show you because he would have ideas um, and people would be like, nah, nah, why would you do that? Father? And he was like, all right, then let me show you. And afterward, it will become a fucking hit or right. something crazy. And it's like he believed him enough in himself for the people that he respected to say no that's trash and to still do it and become successful i think that level of self-faith and belief is something that you need in this and i think that there's a lot of trash people out here that rap or do music or do anything and they win because they believe in themselves so hard like you've seen those people you know yeah. like like yo this person's garbage but they're very successful because they think that they're the shit despite right, the yeah, fact yeah, yeah. and i think that thinking that you're the shit and realizing that it goes a long way and having that energy so him having that and believing himself even when people didn't believe in him that that's why he became who he was you know what i'm saying because it's hard to do something like this that requires every bit of your soul if you don't even believe it's gonna work mm -hmm. you know so that that's that's important so, you know, I think we talked about it before the interview, but you know, you're you, you're you're definitely at a place now where, or you seem you're that you've found your own voice. Yes, you're not, you're not, yes. you know. Hey, <laughs> yes, yeah, my voice. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, you're not living the shadow. Of yeah, anymore. right, right. Um, so, is there what was that? What what lyric or song maybe that you wrote that that kind of you could say like this is where I found my my voice or this is where I or this is what this this is that oh it doesn't matter that he's big pun son he's Chris oh. Rivers the, the oh um, yeah well well like artist. on on this one which one yo I I think I think off rip I think perfect does it I think don't change damage because like all all those parts especially don't change the second verse like I've been around I've been around a lot of pain baby don't talk about it gotta put like all the flows in the pockets and all the subject matter I think a big part of this whole project was really um it screams my own identity I don't think I sound like besides my voice and maybe comp like I think it's obvious that we don't make the same type of music right. not that I'm trying to do that but I was just making my own thing and it doesn't naturally align with what he normally would do and I think even before that I released a bunch of freestyles during the interim while I, yeah, I recently freestyle every week for like years uh, uh, and just just so I could challenge myself and get myself tonally and subject matter better to the point where I feel like I could be more myself and um, there's a bunch of records that did that but I think this whole project really I think um, it's super obvious on stuff like In the Morning where it's like yeah. fully singing and right. even uh, you know what I'm saying and Perfect where it's all like rock, like it's kind of rock and like deep and about love and then, uh, and then tri Trick is just hard. So I can see people seeing that. Like that yeah. one's got bars, bars, bars in it. So it's 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 weird, bro. But I think this one is a full body of work. It screams that. Yeah. Is there a lyric you think that that you on this album mm -hmm. that if you like, if you were able to show it to your dad, he would be kind of, what the fuck? How did you write that? Or you know, like, um, like, like yeah, like, no, yeah. There, there, there's a there's a oh, man like a it's him. Like what what would impress him? Uh, it's, it's that's that's difficult because uh there, there's some there's some incredible like bars bars like there's bars on trick like that that are crazy with the compounded syllables and like i think he'll just be impressed by that like um first thing first i'm a slurp for your sis thing first and the 15 worth and the purse is a big ting shit looking like a suitcase some straight water like boucher treat your daughter like kool-aid man treats walls after yelling out ooh yeah it's a new day start with two l's like cool j and it's tuesday about it everything is so like it's 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 stacked like when when i would like to show him whole verses because I, when you break down the verses, like literally each line threads into each other and it stacks with entendre. So there's multiple definitions and multi-syllables and like just really high level of rapping. And I think that he's going to, I think he would appreciate that. And um, yeah, like it's hard, but I would show him, uh, I would show him sincerely me, obviously. If he came in, I would just show him sincerely me. Like, yo, here, here, bro. It's, it's like... <laughs> He's the video or the the song? I mean, it, I show I probably show him the song. The video yeah. I probably show him the video so he can see them both and he can be like, oh, I see what you did there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but it's interesting. I don't know what I don't know what he would want to hear. Like, I would definitely love to show him the whole thing. Um, but 
Yeah, one lyric. I I, I don't know. It would have to be a, a big, thing. big thing. I don't know if it, I'm not easy to impress, so I don't think he will be. <laughs> yeah. uh, your final track in the album is "Birds," yeah, featuring Avery. Um, can you who's this track about? But why is this the last track? You kind of leave us. So the last track, it's a bonus track. Uh, the last track and it and it's uh, "Birds," and that's one of my favorite records. Uh, it's the it's the last track because it's the first one that I recorded for the project. That's awesome. You know, what I'm saying so that's why it's the bonus one. And um and this one was uh about uh during my uh the last relationship or uh, like i i got inspired through that to write through the breakup and really um understanding what that meant like you know you were the biggest part of my life i picked a heart that's picked apart then picked the part of starlight on dark nights when our sights was uh was um but that whole i forgot the words there but that whole shit like um you were the biggest part of my life i picked a heart that's picked apart then picked the part of starlight on dark nights so that whole thing is like yo like i realized throughout my whole life uh i always wanted to feel useful i wanted to feel like i was important to somebody because i didn't feel important to myself so i compensated with trying to be the be someone else's everything and, and use that to gratify myself so it's like i pick I, I would pick girls who were who needed someone or needed saving or like that so that sort of thing and to see and to be aware of that about yourself to see your patterns i did these without noticing you know what i'm saying so i picked the heart that was picked apart then picked apart of starlight on dark night so i wanted I, I wanted to be your light because you were trapped in darkness and realizing that and then even through the verse like even the second verse and going through it like um you know like realizing that like we we're we're in pain but we're like trying to stay together but the toxicity is growing like it was really me surmising everything i learned about relationships and love and and like myself in it and really just putting it out there in a way that was like beyond the under like i understand it now and it's nobody's fault and it's always all love but we're not healthy for each other and i think that that's what people have to realize that sometimes you stick together with someone not because they're good for you but because you're comfortable or too afraid to be alone and that and that destroys a lot of people and i wanted this song to kind of scream that and to just come from a real place and it, and it was and but i still missed it. that's the hard part when you still miss them yeah. you know what i'm saying so i wrote that like i still miss it and the birds don't sing no more like there's no there's no chirping there's right. no fairy tale there's no like you know so it's, it was just nice but that was the first one i recorded and that was the first time i really that's the first time i really started like trying to do tonal stuff and like the with the with the with the melodies and different stuff like that and shout out to avery on the on the in you know because yeah. he could actually sing so he had all the in and outs <laughs> you had a good voice you got yeah, a good yeah voice. no no it's dead no but like i got a good voice and i'm and i'm molding it uh but when i hear it in my head it's max power full fully grown chris who could like bust it right. so if, if if it's not how it is in my head i bring in other people to make sure that it's closer to that, right, right, you know right. what I mean. So yeah, it's like that. Yeah, in my head, I'm amazing. So yeah, yeah, I'm, yo, I'm, 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 I'm the, I'm the shit I'm all the time. I, I, I make the three pointer yeah, first right, shot. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, everything. Covering Stevie Wonder records. Yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty easy, 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 easy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I met you 2015. Uh-huh. Uh It was a brief conversation. Only 400 years into 400 my years career. Ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, saw you live at SOBs uh -huh. talking today. You've been through a lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, this album is obviously one of your favorite. Your probably your favorite, easily my favorite, favorite album. of all of mine. Yeah. Um, and you and you talk to you and you're like, well, this seems like this was also a an amazing therapy session for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you approach the album that way? Did you know how therapeutic it was going to be? Um, I I did and I didn't. Like um, midway through, like afterward, like analyzing it, um, I didn't realize. I, analyzing it i realized that it was that's what it was for me and that's what i needed at the time like while i was making it i was in a in a crazy place even the process of making it, i was in a crazy place and just uh and just putting it all out there i didn't realize how much i needed that and i needed this breakthrough uh musically so like and even after hearing it like it's right like i want my next project like now i did this i want my next project to be extra external like about like the world and how i see it because this one's so internal and i say that as a good thing where it's like you're almost living inside of my mind you know what i'm saying like and everything that i've been and all the perspectives and the weirdness and all this stuff and the like you're living inside of there and um and i needed to i needed that because i feel like i've been living outside of myself through the rest of my the, my whole career where i was trying to please everyone else this one i wanted it all internal kind of therapy because it's therapeutic because it's like yo i'm, I'm getting through something like this is me on the verge of thinking i'm so worthless that i want to kill myself to trying to convince myself that i'm the greatest in the universe right. you know and that's the widest gap that there is besides this one <laughs> and like you know like and 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 in order to tackle that and to unpack that it had to be almost therapeutic and and like a like a session where i'm where i'm just saying all these things that's real 
and unloading it. And I think it's going to help a lot of people because the, the way that I've felt in a lot of these things, I know it's, I'm not alone in it, you know, so I wanted that. And if th- this helped me and if it helped anybody else as much as it helped me more or less, then I'm happy, you know. That's my final question. Um, yes. Obviously at a good place right now yeah. in your life. Decent, uh, you know. Decent, yeah, decent yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, decent place. Album drop, uh, yeah. Grace in the Universe. Yes. Great album. Thank Stream you, Stream it, buy it, mm-hmm. whatever you got to do. Tattoo it on your arm. Tattoo it on your arm. Flesh. Tell a friend. Yes. Phone a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, if we just think about, I'm asking this as an artist, because this is kind of, I think like this is, you know, artists present their feelings through lyrics. Yes. Um, if you were to choose kind of a verse, a lyric that kind of summed up where you are now in your life, and it's on this album. Wish what would the lyric or the verse be? Oh yeah, it, it would it would uh it would be the second verse of uh of Don't Change, the one that we quote. I've been around, I've been around a lot of pain, baby. Don't talk about it. Got to put some things far away. I must have smoked a pound a day just to cloud the rain, baby. I know, I know, I can find that. I can find a way. The weed I roll up, losing the control of life seems cliche, don't it? But we stay golden. Our uh, dreams they mold into actions which became moments it took a bit to realize but i hope i never change even though i hold my own self-image inside of a frame to be rearranged by my brain that's conditioned to see myself feeling pain i know i love myself deep down beyond all the heartbreaks and beat downs it's a little bit of that light a little bit of that fight left right left one step at a time we ain't die yet it'll all work out if you're trying so are you trying and that I was talking to myself and I was talking to everybody else. And I think that kind of sums it up. Like I've been around a lot of pain. Don't talk about it. Got to put some things far away. And that, and just realizing how much like that, that one to me, like when I wrote it, it was just like straight from here to there. And um, yeah, I think that sums it up the most for me, like just where I was at and where I'm at now. Like it took a bit to realize, but I'm here now. Like I feel I'm, 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 way i'm feeling like the greatest right now and, awesome. and and that was a long way coming so it that's feels amazing good. yeah it's awesome that one uh grazing the universe new album yeah uh chris rivers yes yes uh, indeed as always it's been a pleasure to have you on the library likewise Tim brother come Thank on you, man. man thanks thanks for doing this appreciate again. you forgive me for talking so much you no know? that's like, what you're see, supposed to use okay cool cool yeah i'm, I'm, I'm like i gotta talk I try, I try to give good answers I, I see a lot of interviews and some rappers sound like they're illiterate, so I'm like, yeah. No, I mean, it's really like, it's about just your thing. Like, Divulging. Like, oh, yeah, why, yeah, thank yeah. you, thank you. You asked a good question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I was trying not to, uh, I don't want to get like TMZ-ish or... Uh, nah, bro, I, I, you know, I love this interviews. This is your life. <laughs> this is it. No, no, you. Did, I, I could tell like you care, like, yeah. and, I, and that's why I like from interviews, so you, you did it, you did a phenomenal job. Cool. Please, thank, thank you, Thank you.